All right, what is going on, you guys? It's your boy, Three Sickety Stacks in this thing, baby, representing Team Kings of Games. Uh, today, I'm going to be updating ABCs on my channel today. Um, this is basically pure ABC. It's nothing like, like Light Sworn or 60 card ABC variants that I've done before. Um, this deck actually does have quite a bit of a consistency boost. Just over time, cards have been released that just gave this deck generic conditions that help it to achieve its inboard, basically giving you more consistent access to Buster. Um, obviously, I don't know why this card got hit multiple times and then just came back to three. Konami just words me out sometimes. This deck is in a pretty decent position for the format. I mean, like, honestly, like, Buster is literally like a win condition against so many decks. It's just the advantage to get off of that card. Some decks can't keep up with it. Some decks can. Zeus is a thing. You know, so there's like pros and cons to it. But at the same time, uh, just having access to that many bodies on the follow-up is why this deck's second turn and third turn are typically a lot more explosive than its first turn. Its first turn is more about setting up your board, just getting access to your buster and your infinity with as many hand trips as you can have, back rows and defensive cards. And you're trying to just hold your opponent at bay for one turn because your buster tag out is going to give you enough advantage for you to actually be able to OTK your opponent through multiple interruptions, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, my list um, is a bit different. I will explain some things when I get into it, um, just my mindset. Because like some people, I, like, I have like talked to other ABC players and some people have like these weird approaches with certain cards and they like think certain cards don't work and that... Like, certain cards, like, are just better against this deck than they actually are. Um, I'll explain that when we get in there. Um, but let's go ahead and start with the starters first. Oh, yeah, I, I guess I should just go ahead and share um, some cards that I'm thinking about playing before I get into list. I'm thinking about playing Gizmek Yada. Um, all it's really going to do is just lock me into machines. That's, like, an extender, and it's a level 5, which is really, really good. And all I'm going to be doing is summoning Orbital and uh, Nova and Infinity and Buster most of the time, and even Platinum Gadget. Those are all machines, so... I see, like, no drawback to this card turn one. Maybe, like, turn two and three, you want to go into, like, more generic cards. But I just see it as, like, an extender, an additional option to actually achieve your inboard. Because, for example, if you were attributing off B to some of this card and getting, like, that extra normal, B obviously searches. And that can just accrue into Buster because the piece you search off B basically hits the field off the extra normal. Uh, you link them off into, you know, Union Carrier. That effect can trigger if you have another piece in hand. If not, you just go orbital, orbital, equip the missing piece, banish it from your field and the other two pieces from grave, and there's your buster off of like a B plus this. So like, I'm just thinking about it. There's some things I'm, I'm still on the fence about Topologic Bomber and Omega and the Bushinki Buh Link and also Exiton Knight. These are just cards I'm considering, you know, um, nothing set in stone, but let's go ahead and get into the list. There's not that many starters in AVCs. Uh, I tried to make it as consistent as possible. Um, that's why I did think about even playing Photon Sanctuary because it's a one-card orbital and the restriction doesn't hurt too much. So I'm just thinking about ways to make sure that I'm not breaking. Um, basically, the starters here are going to be, obviously, your four copies of Union Hanger. This card is a one-card combo. Um, and something cool about the one-card combo with ABCs is that a lot of people, like, I don't know why people say this. It's like, it doesn't make sense to me. Like even um, when I was at Locals, I played against ABC player and then uh, Kali was right next to us. And he was saying uh, the problem with the one card combo is it loses to Nibiru. I was like, what the heck? Why do you and so many people say that? Like, why do people think this card, this one card combo loses to Nibiru? Like literally your opponent is going to have to Nibiru you before you get access to Buster. Because what happens, I mean, you're already going to have access to Buster because what's going to happen is you're going to summon Nova, and they have to nib you before you drop Infinity. If they nib you too early, you can still summon Infinity and Buster anyways. They have to wait till you commit, and then when they wait till you commit, they're going to have to drop nib before you summon Infinity. So once Nova hits the field and they nib you, you could even play Invoke Macabre in your extra deck. Just literally to make the one-card combo, it'll play through nib more. I'm, I don't know. I'm not going to say I'm a different breed. I just don't know why people think like they know what they're talking about what they don't sometimes. It's like the one-card combo literally can trade a Nibiru. Like, for example, if your opponent drops Nib on Nova and you're not playing Makaba, you traded one card with your opponent for your one card and you still get Buster anyway. So you just banish three pieces, summon Buster, and that's all for one card. So one Union Hanger literally plays through Nib, gets you a Buster anyways, and if you play Invoke Makaba in your extra deck, you're going to get two interruptions, pretty much uh, Omni Negator anyways, and you're going to get a Buster through the Nib, which is insane. So, like, this, this one card combo is really powerful. And whenever they ask this, if you don't have Gamma, you just normal piece and you combo anyway. So it's like the safest way to play in this deck. Union Hager is like literally insane. 
Uh, and again, that's just what I was saying in the beginning of the, the video, like how some people really think that like it loses to Nib. It just doesn't make sense. I would love to trade a Nib with my opponent all day and still summon a Buster at the end of it. It's just crazy. I might actually put Invoke Macabre in my extra deck just because of that interaction. Um, yeah, it just makes this deck just so resilient against Nib. And then for other starters, I'm on three copies of Unauthorized Reactivation. Um, this card is not as good as Union Hanger, but it's still pretty strong. And this card, because it being it, it's a quick play, it's very interactive with your opponent. And there's a lot of very, very cool, um, skillful interactions that you can actually um, utilize with this card uh, against control decks, against spell heavy decks, against combo decks. Equipping the appropriate pre, uh, the appropriate piece to your Buster can solidify Buster's protection where you can tag out when you're comfortable. You don't have to tag Buster out when he's threatened. Sometimes you have to make Buster run away and hide, you know, for a turn because they're threatening him. But this helps so that they can't pressure your Buster. So you tag out when you want to. So you can even tag out on in phase if you want to. And that just solidifies the OTK. Um, chaining this to hand traps, things of that nature is really, really good. Hand traps on whether it's your Union Carrier or any other machine, basically the appropriate targets, obviously. Uh, reactivation is insane. TT, uh, Chain, Equip C. Like, it's just crazy, you guys. Like, this card is just really, really, really good. It's very reactive. It's very good. Strikers, Equip B. Sky Strikers can't do anything now. It's just, the stack's really, really good. Very good. Um, I need to find my skill drain because I honestly want a main skill drain in this deck. Uh, and this is not actually a starter. It just has a chance to draw a starter. I'm not playing the new pot card. Obviously, I can't afford that. So Desires is my budget option for it. Uh, Desires is still a card that says draw two. It gives you a higher probability of deck thinning into the cards that you want to see. And then Upstart is another deck thinner. So these are all, once you see these, these all pretty much let you see another card. So you have basically four, seven, 10, 11 deck thinners. It's Upstart makes this a 39 card deck. That's how consistent I want it to be. And technically, since Desires is Pot of Greed, I'm really actually playing a 36 card deck. But when I factor in the fact that Union Hanger does what it does, I'm playing a 32 card deck. Uh, and that for me is very, very, very consistent. So these are pretty much the starters that you want to see. These are ideal. Um, there's not very many like, like for example, the hand traps in the format, like for example, Ghost Spell doesn't really do much to this deck. Ash is okay. It doesn't really stop your combo hardly ever unless your hand is just really butt cheeks and you have like Hanger and nothing else with no Gamma in hand, of course. And then cards like DD Crow are okay, but it doesn't always end your turn. Um, and Skullmeister doesn't always end your turn either. So like the hand shots being played, whether it's Gamma, Ash, um, Bale, Skullmeister, DD Crow, or even Nibiru, um, none of those hand traps are literally strong enough by themselves to just end your turn. You can even play through a combination of both. For example, you can play through Ash and Nibiru at the same time, which is really, really cool. So the deck is very solid, you know. Um, you basically want to drop a Lancia. That's how you want to stop ABCs from going off. Because Buster, like I said, is really hard to keep up with. And that um, spot removal, being able to banish cards is just amazing. <laughs> it's really, really good. Then we have um, all my pieces I'm playing three of. So... 3A, 3B, and 3C. Um, I wouldn't play any less than 3. Um, even if I wasn't playing Desires, the pieces are literally the most important monsters in your main deck. Since I'm on Desires, I'm also opting to play Triple Galaxy Soldier so that I don't ever banish one and only have one so that I can't go into my Infinity play. Uh, I am playing still one Orbital, and I only have one Union Driver. I recommend playing two, even if you're not playing Desires. Um, I just like this card. Um, like, There's quite a few reasons why you want to play two. I don't have to list them all. Um, but I really want to, like, I want to see it a second time, and I also never really, you know, want to draw it, obviously, and not be able to equip it off Hanger. Um, but seeing it a second time is really, really good. It just, it's a problem-solving card. Um, you might even want to play two Union Carriers in this deck. I'm not going to lie. Like, there's quite a few options to make sure that you can maintain maintain your stability when you're playing this deck. Because uh, if Buster gets, um, like, basically, if Buster gets threatened, your follow-ups have to be the, what's left over in your hand. Um, so that's kind of like the main engine, so to speak. Now we're getting into our hand traps. Uh, I'm playing three copies of Gamma and Driver. This is to combat Lancia and Droll and Ash on Union Hanger. You know, things of that nature. Gamma's pretty solid as a hand trap and it's light food, but the rest of my hand traps are not light food. I'm playing three Ash, it's generically applicable. It's really good in this format. Uh, two Bell and two Crow. So the number of hand traps I'm actually playing is just 10. Uh, but all of them are really, really good against pretty much everything. And then I lastly, I have some de defensive cards for utility purposes. Called by is a multi-purpose card. It's just, it's so good. It's, it's literally a staple card. 
Uh, it made itself a household name in Yu-Gi-Oh. And then three Torrentials. I just like having Torrential to catch my opponent off guard. Um, the way I like to use Torrential if I open it going first is what happens is uh, when my opponent commits to summon something, I chain Buster and then I chain TT. Um, so what happens is TT resolves first. And uh, Buster resolves backwards, so TT nukes the field, and then Buster resolves to bring your pieces out, which is really, really cool. Um, so I just like that cool interaction right there. Uh, and you can always do it because the initial response is going to be um, the, your opponent summoning. Win effects are basically appropriate when the last thing that happens is basically what allows the card to activate. And since the last thing to happen at the end of the day is a monster being summoned, you can do that play. Um, TT is just, it's not necessary. You don't have to play it, but I just like having a secret blowout, you know, a secret weapon where I have like a buttload of hand traps. I have a buster. I have infinity. I have a crazy tag out and I have like TT sitting here. Like I said, I need to find my skill drain and put my skill drain in here because skill drain is just crazy good in ABCs. It's so good. It, it, it's just crazy. <laughs> like it really is. Um, so, and it's just the unique properties of buster tagging out that makes like this deck able to play different kinds of cards, which is really, really cool because how Buster attributes itself for cost. Um, another one of my favorite plays to do when I play against back row decks is I set up for, um, I, that's why I was wanting to play the Topologic Bomber, but when I play against back row decks, um, I set up for Topologic Trishbania, and then what happens is I Buster tag out, and that's how you just kill Eldritch. You're just gonna Buster tag out on in phase, um, summon one of your pieces, not multiple, just one of your pieces that you don't need to the Trishbania, and you're just gonna banish all spells and traps on the field. And what's really cool is um, Trisbania is not actually once per turn. So you, if you have the opportunity, you can trigger it multiple times, which is really, really cool. Um, just being able to banish the Eldritch cards is really crazy. So this deck has some cool ways to kind of uh, like lock your opponent out, cool ways to interact with your opponent, and some kind of like supplemental win conditions that are not just Buster itself, but generic cards that help you to raise the ceiling of your deck. Because obviously, ABCs are not like a tier one deck, but they're a very threatening deck. You know, they're very scary. Um, everybody has to respect Buster. So, getting on to the extra deck, all the sleeves are mismatching. Uh, we're playing three Busters. Um, I like, I kind of wanted to play Deck of Samurai, but I haven't really ran into a game like in my life where. I ran out of three busters and I needed to summon another one. Like, it, it just, it doesn't really happen. Typically, you might need the second. It just depends how you're going to be grinding. Uh, but the third one just, it, you don't need four busters, basically. Um, something that I do like to do is I call it union tag, so to speak. I like to equip my buster with, with as many pieces as possible because he is simply a masterpiece at that point by making him unaffected by the appropriate cards that threaten me um, against Drytrons. You want to make him unaffected by spells for droplet and unaffected by monster effects. And then even if they find some miraculous way to kill him, the union pieces all die together at the same time instead of him. You'll get pluses and you're going to get fodder to just banish something. This card is really, really good. Even chaining Buster to like the Drytron Ritual spell, um, banishing Drytron monsters against VW, you want to call, um, not call, but equip C, Crush Wyvern and A so that he's unaffected by monsters and Chuchi. Um, sometimes you might want to make him unaffected by Quinlong too. Um, it just depends. Uh, but bottom line, you don't ever want your opponent to either A, force your buster to discard to banish when you don't want to, and B, threaten him to you have to make him tag out when you didn't want him to, which is like, it's playing out of your comfort zone. So sure, Chuchi and Quinlong directly don't stop him. They force him to just banish those cards. But by making him unaffected by at least one of the two, Quinlong or Chuchi, and then a monster, now you can use his banish to take care of the Quinlong, which would threaten him. And he's no longer phased by Chuchi or monster. So you don't have to tag out, if that makes sense. And it's just like things like that that are really helpful. Against Eldritch, you always want to make him uh, pretty much unaffected by um, monsters and traps because of Zeus and cards like Prison and um, cards like, you know, Conquistador, etc. Uh, this card's just really crazy. And um, the fact that you can make him like a masterpiece makes him like one of the most perfect boss monsters in the game. And then I'm playing Union Carrier. Definitely wanted to play Photon Sanctuary just to make this card. This card is really, really good in this deck. Platinum Gadget. It just comes up. You don't always make it, but it does come up. That's why you want to play it. Lambda, because I am playing um, Gamma. If you ever have Gamma in hand and you're trying to combo safely, you just go into your Lambda. Phoenix was the nightmare of choice. Um, I wanted to play more like, instead of like a bunch of generic nightmares, I wanted to play more cards that like I personally want to try, like cards that I believe are like gonna solve problems for me. Um, this package is mandatory. It's one of the ways that you're gonna get your resources into Grave to Summon Buster in the first place. So Cyber Dragon Infinity has just found another home. 
And then we have Dweller and Tornado. Um, decks that Dweller is not good against, Tornado typically is. So that's why I chose these as a rank force of a choice. You could have went with Dugaris, the Timeless, Emerald. I mean, there's a buttload of rank fours that you could play, um, just being honest. But I like these. I really like Dweller in the format right now, too. It's really, really, really good. Uh, and then Trishbania, this card is insane, you guys. I love this card. Uh, I No ABC player in his right mind should ever not play this card. It just doesn't make sense when I see people playing ABCs and don't play this. It just doesn't make sense. Like, this is literally a win condition. Like, it's better than Duster it's in the terms of that. The way you're using it is you're getting rid of your opponent's back rows before they get a chance to activate them because they have to set their traps first. And you're banishing them, and it's not once per turn, and it turns into an access code talker next turn that's already 5,300 damage. So this card's really, really good. And it burns your opponent. So again, you can even use this to go, uh, like, uh, to win in time. You can't banish your own spells and traps and burn, but you burn for what you're banished from your opponent. But, like, I'm just saying, like, it could be a win condition in time if you banish your opponent's spells and traps in your main phase. Uh, then for Rank 4s, Link 4s, we have Oppo, Sword, and Access Code. Um, I feel like these come up a lot, but this one, it's just here and there. This is mainly like if you didn't draw Gamma, because normally you'll put Lambda up, but if you didn't hop Gamma, you want to stick something up to protect your play so that you can OTK safely without getting nipped. If your Infinity survived, you don't care. You don't go into Oppo, but if Infinity died, you want Oppo, because you want to OTK with security, you know what I mean? Um, so that is the extra in the main. You guys can definitely let me know how you feel, what you think. Um, I do think ABCs are a really, really good deck in the right hands. Um, they can be very, very scary. Um, they have a lot of opposition. You know, obviously, there's a lot of competitive decks out there that this deck has to worry about. But I feel like my build covers the ground and basis of what I'm worried about. I have, like, literally 10 hand traps and 3 torrentials to combat pretty much any combo deck, including Drytrons and Virtual Worlds and Dinos. Um, Zodiacs literally just get bodied by TT um, alone and... Um, Obviously, you can build your side deck accordingly. If I could afford Droplets, Droplets has a wonderful place in a deck like this. Droplets sending ABC pieces can just give you advantage. Just really, really good. Droplets has a nice home because you can easily hit, you know, spell monsters, sometimes even trap off of it. Um, and with unauthorized um, activation being a card, it gives Droplets more utility because you could just activate this, equip something, chain Droplets, send this, something else. It's just really, really good. I like this card a lot in this deck. This card is insane it, it stops hand traps on top of everything else it's really 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 good even countering nibiru if you just miraculously played into nibiru and didn't have a negator up you just chain equip a and then the monster is unaffected by nibiru so unauthorized is an insanely broken card and this deck is very balanced it's like tier two material but people would probably throw it in the everything else pile to be honest that's just how it is sometimes but i'm gonna say a prayer and end the video our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Lord Jesus Christ, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Please give us this day our daily bread, Lord Jesus, and please forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, Father, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the glory, and the power forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Father. Amen. Um, again, always open to constructive criticism. I'm sure a lot of people um, that are ABC players have different ideas and stuff like that, but... um. That's the beauty of it. Like Yu-Gi-Oh is just such a diverse game with so many different players, diverse mindsets that there's no real right or wrong thing. At the end of the day, um, when you're building a deck, if it does what you built it to do, meaning it, it achieved exactly what you had in mind building it, can't nobody tell you nothing. They can't tell you your deck's trash. They can't tell you your deck sucks or anything like that or tell you what it needs because if your deck's doing exactly what you built it to do, you have succeeded in building that deck. That is my personal little i guess you could say philosophy when it comes to deck building is when you have something in mind and you achieve it you have built that deck successfully even if it doesn't you know do what everybody else expects it to do um and that's just a piece of advice for everybody playing rogue decks specifically because rogue decks get the most turbulence you know what i mean they're gonna get the most opposition from a lot of people because they're not popular sometimes they're just like you know bad decks you know what i mean and some people will definitely um, be a little bit too judgmental towards, you know, your choice of a deck, but, um, yeah, I'm going to say this prayer and you guys don't have to stick around for the prayer, but I'm going to say the prayer. Um, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Lord Jesus Christ, thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Please give us this day our daily bread, Lord Jesus, and please forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, Father, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the glory, and the power forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Father. Amen. And yeah, you guys, definitely try for yourself. Um, I had some other ideas. I wanted to play like Soul Flare, 
um, and try to like literally link climb into a heretic dragon of heavenly spheres. Just thinking of crazy stuff. Uh, Lightsworn's ABCs is still really cool. Chaos ABCs is another idea. There's like so many things you could do with ABCs. But anyways, deuces.